Okay, thank you. I'm Ryuhei Mori from Tokyo Institute of Technology. This work is about exponential time quantum algorithm for graph coloring problem. Uh, in this work, we consider graph coloring problem. In the graph coloring problem, input is an undirected graph, G. And then output is the chromatic number, chi of G of G. This problem is NP hard, so it requires exponential time even for quantum algorithm. The first, fastest known classical algorithm has running time 2 to n, where n is the number of, of vertices. Main result of this work is following. There is a quantum algorithm using quantum RAM. QRAM is a quantum random access memory uh, solving the graph coloring problem with running time 1.914 to n. Uh, so here, this value 1.914 is not so important because we already proved uh, this algorithm and uh, we obtain faster algorithm. So this value is not so important. But this is the first algorithm for graph coloring problem with running time 2 minus epsilon, 2n. Main idea of algorithm is global search for dynamic programming. This idea was given by Ambinus et al in SOLA 2019. Grover's algorithm gives quadratic speed up for exhaustive search. That means if we have n candidates and we want to find best one, and we don't have any assumption, then we have to check all of them, all of n candidates. But in Grover's algorithm, we only have to check square root of n of them. For example, for traveling salesman problem, there is a tri trivial exhaustive search with running time n minus 1 factorial. So we can apply global search for this trivial algorithm. Then we obtain running time square root of n minus 1 factorial. But it's still large. There is a classical algorithm based on dynamic programming with running time 2 to n. This is very well-known classical algorithm. But we don't know how to apply Grover's algorithm for dynamic programming because it's not exhaustive search. Exhaustive search is very parallel algorithm. It's very independent and fast of computation. But dynamic programming is dependent uh, computation. It's sequential com computation. So we don't know how to apply Grover's search to dynamic programming. Ambinus et al. showed how to apply Grover's search to some dynamic programming. And then they obtain a uh, quantum algorithm for traveling salesman problem with running time 1.728 to n. Yeah, so in this work, our goal is to apply their idea to graph coloring problem. So first, let me uh, introduce classical dynamic programming for TSP. For any S subset of vertices, and V, that is vertex in S, we define function A of SV, that is length of shortest path from 1 to V, visiting all vertices in S. Then we have recursive formula on this function. A of 1, 1 is 0, and A of SV is minimum of A of S minus VU plus distance between U and V. And minimum is taken among all U in S but not equal to V. I think uh, you know this uh, algorithm. And here, di distance of UV means uh, weight of edge between U and V. So I think this is trivial formula. And then from smaller S to larger S, we, we can compute uh, value of A, S, V. So when we want to evaluate A of S, V, we, we al already uh, computed A of S minus V, U. So right hand side can be evaluated efficiently. Then finally, we obtain optimal value for TSP by this equation. So, yeah, so running time of this algorithm is about its order n squared times 2 to n because number of argument is number of choices of S is 2 to n and number of choices for v is n, at most n. So there are 2 to n times n number of arguments on this function. 
And for each argument, uh, we require running time n for finding u, this u. So in total, running time is n squared 2 to n. Yeah. So this is very classical, very known dynamic programming for TSP. So now uh, we can use global algorithm, global search. So where can we apply global search? Obviously here, minima. Here uh, we can apply global search. Then uh, we obtain quadratic speed up. So uh, time complexity n is reduced to n square. In that case, uh, total running time is n to 1.5 to n. It's very small improvement. Only polynomial factor is improved, and 2 to n is uh, doesn't change. So we need some trick. So for applying global search to dynamic programming, we need QRAM. QRAM is quantum version of random access memory. Uh, classical random access memory is something like this. If address i is given, then value stored at address i is obtained. That is denoted by m of i. QRAM is its quantum version. If ket i, ket 0 is given, then we obtain ket i, ket m of i. Significant difference is uh, this uh, procedure is unitary, so that means it's linear. So if a query is in superposition, then we obtain the value in superposition. This is a significant difference. Anyway, we assume that we have QRAM. And then this is an unbinding set algorithm. This, that is shown in a single slide. Uh, for all subset S of vertices, vertices and U and V in S, we define function B of SUV as the length of shortest path from U to V visiting all vertices in S. Then optimal value of TSP is minimum of this value, minimum of B of S1 V plus B of V minus S or one minus V, V1. And here minimum is taken among all S that is subset of vertices of site N over two. I think this is also uh, obvious equation. And here, right-hand side, B of S1 V, these, there are two Bs, right-hand side. These are evaluated uh, by similar recursion. And then, uh, unbinding state towards algorithm is following. First, for all S of side at most N over four, and all u and v in s, then this value of function is computed by classical dp in the previous slide and stored to QRAM. Then compute optimal value of TSP according to this formula. And here, t has size at most n, t has size n over 4, and b, s minus t also has size n over 4. That means the value is already computed at first step and stored to QRAM. So we can use them. And time complexity is following. For the first step, time complexity is about n choose n over four, because there are n choose n over four choices for s. And here we ignore polynomial factor. So in fact, there are n square choices on u and v. But here we ignore uh, polynomial factor. So the time complexity for the first step is and choose n over four. And time complexity for second step is following. Uh, first, n choose n over two for finding s in the first formula, and n over two choose n over four for finding t in the second formula. And here we can apply global search, so we get square root here. This is our running time of this algorithm. And then first term is larger than second term, and the first term is about 1.755 to n. Yes, so it's very simple. And if, furthermore, we can optimize this algorithm. We introduce parameter alpha, and first step pre-computation is done up to n over 4 times 1 minus alpha. Here, alpha is very small value. And then first term decrease, first term in the running time decrease, and second term increase. And which is alpha such that two terms are equal. Then we, we obtain 
uh, running time 1.728 to end. This is unbinary algorithm. Now, let's apply this idea to chromatic number. Uh, for chromatic number, chi of g satisfy this formula. Chi of g is minimum of chi of g s. Here, g s is induced subgraph by s. Here, s is a subset of vertices. Chi of g s plus chi of g b minus s. And we take minimum among all choices of s. s is not equal to empty or not equal to b. Yeah, and I think this equality is trivial. And then here, if we can assume that S has size n over two, of course, this assumption is not correct. But if we can assume this, then the running time is following. T of n, running time T of n is T of n over two for evaluating chi of gs and chi of g v minus s times two to n over two, because number of choices of S is two to n. And we can apply Global search. So we, we get one half here. So 2 to n over 2. Then finally, we obtain lining time 2 to n. So here, uh, there is no improvement from the best classical algorithm. But this is just uh, divide and conquer. There is no uh, dynamic programming. But with pre computation, that means uh, first we compute a chromatic number of small subgraph. Yeah. Then we obtain some improvement. That means we obtain quantum algorithm with running time two to a uh, two minus epsilon two n. Yeah, so it's okay. But this idea doesn't work because this assumption is not correct. We cannot assume that S is about n over two. This is a trivial example. This is a star graph, and this is two color blue. Chromatic num number is two. And essentially, the optimal coloring is unique. Uh, a single color for the single vertex at the center, and the other color for other the other vertices. So this means we have to choose S as a single vertex or all but single vertex. So size of S is not close to n over two. So it's very unbalanced coloring. So we cannot use that assumption. Yeah, so here we introduce the notion of independent set. Independent set is a subset of vertices that are not connected to each other. So this is an example. This red vertices are is independent set because they are not connected by an edge. Then graph is colorable with k colors if and only if vertices can be partitioned into k independent sets. This is also trivial. And then this is a key lemma. This is a very elementary lemma, but very important in this work. Let n1 to nk be positive integers. I think that nk is the largest one among all integers. Then there is t such that uh, sum of n1 to nt is at most n over two. Here n is the sum of all integers. And also sum of nt plus one to nk minus one is also at most n over two. Here, nk is not included in this term, right? So that means if nk largest integer is excluded, then the other integers can be partitioned into some balanced sets. This is a key lemma. This is very easy to, easy to show. Then this is our algorithm. First. For S of size at most n over 4, we compute chromatic number of G of S with some, some well known algorithm by well known dynamic program. And they are stored to QRAM. This is very similar to the, the algorithm for TSP. Then let's see equal to N. This is initialization. And for each maximal independent set I and partition of B minus I into S and T such that both of S and T has size at most n over two to foreign. Uh, com compute chromatic number of GS and GT recursively, and then uh, take minimum of C and sum of chromatic numbers. And finally, output C plus one. I think the validity 
is obvious from the key lemma. Here, independent set i is ex expected as as a uh, independent set corresponds to the the some single car with with largest one largest independent set in the car ring. And then uh, we call the partition of b b minus i. But with a, from the lemma, we can assume that size of s and t is at most n over two. So yeah, it's sperm. Right. Yes. So yeah. And in the recursion, uh, we, we skip the first step for the pre-computation. So in the recursion, S uh, from S, which is independent set I, and also S minus I is partitioned in, into two parts. But each part has size n over four. That means we already have chromatic number in QR. So it's yeah similar to Hamburg Setor's algorithm. Uh, this is the yeah, formal description of algorithm. I don't explain detail, but here there are some minimum for choosing maximal independent set or subset. And here we can apply global search and we get quadratic improvement. And then analysis of this algorithm is not so simple, but uh, finally, uh, we obtain this running time. It's algebraic, and it's about 1.914 to n. Uh, yes, and this is this value is not so important because uh, we have already faster algorithm. But this is fast algorithm for graph coloring problem with running time two minus epsilon to n. We also consider. Uh, graph K coloring problem. Graph K coloring problem is decision problem. Input is a, an undirected graph, and output is yes if G is K colorable, and no otherwise. And graph three coloring problem and graph four coloring problem. Uh, hi, Richie. Just uh, one or two more minutes. One or two minutes. Uh, yes. Uh, Fast uh, algorithm are known. Yes, but for graph five coloring problem, no uh, two minus epsilon to n algorithm has been known. And in this work, uh, 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 we obtained quantum algorithm not using QRAM with running time alpha to n, where alpha is shown here. And he, alpha is at most. Uh, alpha is less than two for k at most 20. Yes, so yeah. this is the second result of our uh, our paper. Main, uh, main idea is k coloring problem is reduced to k prime coloring problem for some k prime less than k. Uh, it was uh, shown by Bayeskov. And this is summary. Uh, thank you for your attention. That's all. Okay. Thank you very much, Richie. And uh, now I have time for questions. We have two more minutes. So whoever wants to ask questions can go to the mic. So in the meantime, I have one question. So Richie, in, in your algorithm, like the one that you're describing, can you tell me how does it work for the star graph? Because you were partitioning it into two vertices that were uh, like two sets that were of size n over two. Uh, for star graph, uh, first, uh, first I choose uh, which is independent set i, right? Right. Um, yeah, this independent set means uh, this corresponds to largest independent set in the graph. So that means uh, we expect that independent set i is this blue, blue part, is i. Oh, OK, OK. Uh, so, but yeah, in, in this case, it's already too colorful. So yeah. Right, I see. So it's, yeah. it's your independent set will be the, like the yeah. one guy and all the other ones, right? And then you're oh, yes. yes, yes. OK, OK. Okay, thanks. Let's see if we have more questions. 
Um, and if not, uh, can we just have Abdul to come and already start setting up? Okay, thanks again, Richie. That's a really nice talk.